Juan de Escuela Navarro by Robert Saufe. Vestris used to say there were but three great men in Europe, Voltaire, the King of Prussia, and himself. It is a proof of greatness in the Stuart de la Dance, as he called himself, that he admitted the co-equality of the two former, allowed the head to the worthy of reputation as well as the heels, and for the evolutions of the battle might be performed in as masterly a manner as those of the dance. How must he have admired those courts where there was a royal professor of dancing? Philip the Fourth of Spain conferred this dignity upon Antonio Alamenda, his own preceptor and gentle art. For surely, if shoemaking be called an honorable distinction from all other trades of gentle craft, dancing is in like manner entitled to be distinguished from all other arts. Almenda, like the druids and philosophers, communicated his mysteries only by oil precept. They were produced a writing by his disciples, Juan de Esquilo Navarro of Seville. His works entitled Discursus sobre el arte del distanzo y sus excelencias y prima origen, reprobando las acciones de sonestas. Sevilla, 1642. I know not whether there be any earlier treatises upon the art. The Philip profited by the lessons of his royal professor, it would be in vain to inquire. He made many footsteps in politics, whatever he may have done in the saloon, to ever Almenda may have instructed him to carry himself, Olivares prevented him from walking upright through the world. Some celebrity a prince may acquire by dancing, or me and God, an old German used to say, who remembered the last Duke of York upon his travels, or me and God, the Duke of York was the most accomplished gentleman that ever did see at a dance at the minuet. Never went into a ballroom without regretting the Duke of York, and sighing for the inferiority of all who attempted to dance at the minuet after him. The Duke's fame has probably died with his old German. There's something melancholy and calling to mind the barren accomplishments of the dead, even more so than in remembering beauty which has faded. In all the operations of nature, there is a view to the future. It should be so with the actions of man, and those pursuits which have no other aim beyond the present gratification are unworthy of him. I subscribe the thought of the prohibition of the Quakers against music and dancing, were it only upon the ground that they cannot leave a joy for memory. This is somewhat too serious a strain to be introduced to the vestress, the royal professor, and the Duke of York. But where you understand the process of the associations of thought, may see how I have slipped into this moralizing mode, by writing slowly, eerie, and letting thought ramble on. A further exemplification be needful, go and read Montaigne.